little bit extra time. If you have a couple questions, you want to ask Frank directly, that's great. Um, since uh, the other candidates aren't here, we're going to have a little bit of extra time, I think, uh, that we weren't planning on. So I've prepared some uh, discussion points here, and uh, I would, without delaying any more, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. So thanks for coming. There may not be any extra time, but remember, yeah. I started out as a preacher, and now I'm a politician. <laughs> and sometimes I say, okay, you got 30 seconds. Well, I surprised my campaign manager, Bill, down in... Um, Walks a hatchy the other weekend. They said, "Okay, you got 30 seconds to introduce yourself and what you're running for." And I did in 54 seconds. He said, "Hey, you got it in under a minute." So anyway, we may not have extra time, Ross. We don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see how uh, how much fun we have up here. Uh, anyways, so everyone, give a round for Mr. Kuchar. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate being here. You know, most of you folks I've seen over the, you know many, many months of our regular monthly meetings, uh, but I do see a lot of new faces, and uh, we need to get more people involved in this because, folks, our country is on the precipice, and we have got to get ourselves back on track. And let me tell you, let me share, if I can, just for a second, an experience that I've had. Uh, I won't walk around, Mel, I'll stay here so you can. You know how I am about that. Yes, I know, you. yes. For over a year, I've been knocking on doors. I've been going to town functions, most of them in Ellis and Navarro County, because up until just you know a month ago, we didn't know where Arlington was going to fall into the district. So we focused our attention south. And it was amazing to me and sad that I would go to approach somebody walking by our table at one of these, you know, city uh, functions or you know, spring flings or whatever. I asked them, will you be voting in the upcoming primary? No, I don't vote. And they've got two or three youngins. That's Texan, right? Youngins. Yeah. Walking along behind them. And I'm struck with the fact that what got me into this race was two youngins that are most precious to me in this world. Reagan and Caleb, my granddaughter that's nine. And she's named after who you think, by the way. And Caleb, he's seven. And I'm going to have two adopted grandchildren here come August. They don't have a future. If we don't stand up, and I look at these people and say, no, I don't vote. And I'm thinking, seriously? With what you've got here, you're not going to take an interest in this country and their future and their security and their freedom? And it astounds me. And so, folks, I'm preaching the choir here, I know, but we have our work cut out for us. We have got to somehow get our friends and neighbors that don't come to meetings like this on fire because if we don't all get together, we're sunk. And so, anyway, that's my... Pitch and plug tonight for uh, the Tea Party Bell. Great, thanks, Frank. Um, you already answered my first question. Oh, I did. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and skip that. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll move on here. So, uh, what do you plan to accomplish if elected to office that would uh, differentiate you from other candidates running in this race? Let me do that. Let me answer that by explaining what the purpose of a representative is. Anybody have an idea? What do you think a representative is supposed to do? Anybody? Represent. Represent. It. But what do they do in representing you? Listen. Let me tell you what the first and foremost and primary function of a representative is. There's really two. But the primary one is this. We send a representative from Washington, D.C. to the general government. And I call it general because that's what our founders most of the time refer to it as because we've We've killed, they've killed federalism. But their job is to do, first and foremost, to protect our freedom and our liberties. To stand on that Constitution that they take an oath to uphold. And that when they see the general government begin to encroach on our freedom and our liberties, it is, hello, it is their job to stand up and fight and dig your heels in and do everything they can to stop it. And if they can't stop it, to turn around and tell us, hey, look out, this is what's coming down the pike. I have fought tooth and nail to stop it. I was in the minority, I couldn't do it, I got run over. So you need to be aware of what's coming down the pike. You need to get all of your friends and neighbors we talked about on Facebook across this country that you may know, alert them to it and tell them, get a hold of your representative, get a hold of your senator, and get this thing stopped because I need help. 
That's the purpose of a representative, so that we can go about our lives and not have to be worrying and be watching like a hawk for everything they do. That's how we got to this mess, isn't it? Is it not? We voted people up there we thought were good people. Okay, you go up there, you watch out for me. I'm trusting you to preserve my freedom and my liberties, and I'm going to go on and live my life. I'm going to bring my family up, rear my children. We don't raise, you raise crops, rear children. I'm going to rear my children. I'm going to go to the baseball games with them. I'm going to do the Cub Scouts, the Girl Scouts with them, and all this kind of stuff. Go to the school functions and enjoy life. Pursuit of the happiness that is my inalienable right. And you protect me. And what's happened? We've had career politicians that got in there that we thought were good, and they stayed, and they stayed, and they ceased to become citizen legislators, and they became career politicians, and all of a sudden we have woken up and look at the mess we're in. That's what a representative is doing, and that, Ross, is if I do nothing else, is what I would do. And it differentiates me, I think, from other people, because I know a long answer, but we've got time, right? <laughs> when people say, well, what are you going to do for us? What is that really saying? What are you going to bring home for our district? What special goodies are you going to give us? And you know what the problem with this country is? We've got 434 other representatives doing the same thing. Getting outside the Constitution, bringing home the goodies that are not constitutional to their special interests in their districts, and lo and behold, you multiply that times 435 districts, and is it any wonder that we've got the deficit that we have? That we have the debt that we have? That we have the intrusion upon our freedom and liberties that we have? We have got to stand up and say, the Constitution is where we draw the line. And what a representative is to do is to protect my freedom and my liberties and basically nothing else. And if perchance the government does intrude, then the First Amendment says, one of my five rights contained in that First Amendment is the right to petition the government my grievances. And the representative is our conduit to the government to express our grievances, to take up our cause, to plead our case, and to fight for any injustice that we have. That's the duty of what a representative is, and that's what I intend to do, to represent you and to be the tip of the spear. Because no one person can do what needs to be done to try and fight against the intrusion of our freedoms and liberties and to get this government back on track. We all have to do this together. But what the representative is, as my son when he's in the Marine Corps said, the Marine, they're the tip of the spear. When they're on deployment somewhere around the world, he said, when we're on deployment, we're referred to as being the tip of the spear. Not the whole spear, but just the tip. And that's what a representative does. Now, if you want me to get more specific, I can, but philosophical. Well, it's funny you mention all that stuff about the Constitution, because I saw a commercial, and they said, you know, if the government doesn't have all this power, and doesn't spend all these trillions of dollars, my grandparents are going to fall off the side of a cliff. Mm. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you something that Thomas Paine said. Uh, Thomas Paine, we all know, wrote a book called Common Sense. But he also wrote another treatise called The Rights of Men. Have anybody heard of that or read that? I see several heads nodding. Okay. In The Rights of Man, he made the statement that a government without a constitution is power without rights. And so when somebody starts talking about, well, you know, the Constitution, that's, a, that's written by a bunch of old white men way back a couple centuries ago, and they didn't know about all the fancy cell phones and computers and stuff that we're going to have today, so it's not really applicable. If the Constitution can change, then it contains no principles, because principles are truth that are unalterable, that don't change with time. It's like God's commands. His commands don't change through time. And so, if we do not have a constitution that means what they said it meant when they wrote it, then what we have is a government that has power and we have no rights and we shouldn't be surprised that we see our rights under assault. Uh, the Bill of Rights has not been amended since its ratification in 1791, as I'm sure... December 15th, my birthday. There you go. But not the year. Not the year. Uh, what do you think, what's your position on the Patriot Act, um, and what would you say to those Americans who feel that it poses a threat to their civil liberties? And be brief. <laughs> that was another joke. You guys got that one. Seriously? Really? Be yeah. brief? 
Oh. Well, I mean, okay. you know, yeah. I, have, I have a bunch more I like to okay. get to. Okay, so. all right, I, I will try to be brief. The problem is, folks, look, I'm 59 years old. Come January, it is my intention, with your help and your vote, to be on the floor of the House of Representatives, taking the oath to uphold this. I had it here in my pocket. <laughs> this, to uphold this document right here. I'll be 60 years old then. I'm not looking for a 20-year career in Congress. Now, you asked about the Patriot Act. Yes. The Patriot Act, I think, was a knee-jerk reaction to a horrible attack that our country sustained. And that's the problem. We have representatives and senators up there, and bureaucrats and presidents, that when something happens, well, let's pass it, then we'll read it to see what's in it. That seems to be the attitude, is it not? Did we need to be protected? Yes, but the Patriot Act gives the government unwarrantless authority to, to have us under surveillance, to wiretap, that type of stuff. If they want to wiretap somebody or intercept their computer communications, are they prevented from doing that without the Patriot Act? No. You go to a judge in closed session, present your evidence and say, Ahmed Medinajab or whatever, you know, yabba dabba do. We think is a terror. Here's our evidence. Will you give us a warrant to tap his phone to intercept his communications? How hard is that to do? There's that old saying, you let the camel get his nose in the tent, pretty soon you got the whole camel in the tent and you're outside of it. That's what happens with things like this. We overreact without thinking it through and looking at the, well, will this act square with this? And if it doesn't, what in the world are you doing passing it? Everybody's heard Ben Franklin's statement about uh, security and freedom. Has anybody not heard his statement? And I, I'll repeat it anyway. I haven't heard it. Tell us. All right, I, I know better now. <laughs> Got to get you to lie. Ben Franklin made the statement that they who would sacrifice liberty for the sake of a little security deserve neither liberty nor security. And that's what the Patriot Act did. Brief enough? Thank you. That was, that was excellent. That's better? Okay. I'll, uh, work on, I'll work on it as the night goes along. <laughs> that's a joke. This is the, that's a joke. Got, <laughs> this, this is the yes or no question. So this would be, this would be uh -oh. Do you support providing in-state tuition for illegal immigrants? No. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't want, you don't mean to uh, extrapolate? No. Okay, go ahead. No, you could say why, if you'd like, briefly. Well, in state tuition, that's a benefit for citizens. That's right. They're not citizens. Enough said. Moving on. 